Okay, votes are what injure or kill people. They come in contact with electricity. Okay. Um, that should be false, I guess, because of current. Yeah. I don't know, has he given you any equations? This is the basic, simple, um, basic equation for electricity statics of all time, so. I don't think, it's weird because usually we've been doing math on it, but we've been mostly doing the labs. So you must have been Ohm's law, resistance for doing labs. I, get, I mean, I that's where you start usually. I mean, maybe unless you're just talking about voltage. What are you talking about in the labs usually? Um. So, so far it's just been like, kind of like powering a light bulb, I sure. guess. So okay. it's just like using a battery to power a light bulb and then figuring out how electricity works. So oh, okay. I'm not really too sure what's going to be on the quiz. I think it might just be like, um i don't i don't even have a clue what sure. all right well i'll help you figure it out because that helps already because let me maybe don't worry too much about this equation i mean it's super easy right i mean just yeah. look at y equals mx and so y depends on x that's just the constant right yeah so it's the same type of thing but this is i'm going to write it out for you too so you have voltage these are the three fundamental things that you'll you'll only ever have to worry about. Okay, um, like you said, this is the battery though. Okay, mm -hmm. and you can look on. Say I don't even know if they have that these, but if you play video games or whatever, if we got a double A battery, I think they're one point five volts. Batteries provide a voltage, and I'll leave it there. This is then current. Current is the flow of electrons. Um, I guess we'll say that. So that's what, yeah, okay. For that's what electricity is. It's literally, I mean, you understand motion pretty well now, and I mean, it's super simple. Like, you know, you walk down the street, you know, you've changed position by now, and you have a velocity, which is a rate of change with respect to time. So think about an electron moving down the street or moving at all, changing its position with respect to time. It has a speed. That's that's literally what how you generate electricity. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to multiply it, right? That's multiplied. I times R, current is I, and then resistance, which is your light bulb. It's literally, you can literally think of it as that in your lab. It's the light bulb. That's literally, <clears throat> let me slow down, but the battery provides voltage. When that, okay, okay, this is, let me make sure. I'm gonna look through these again, and I think this, this should help you a lot. And we'll lit or unlit, yeah, okay. Okay, that's pretty good too, but we can do that. Um, okay, I told you this, you, you may not need to worry about that, but you're a pro, you got it? You're a pro if you if you do that, but again, so this battery, I'm gonna write these words because I know that helps you now. So battery provides voltage. In fact, did you write this down? I'm gonna go to another page. Mm -hmm. Battery provides voltage. Um, okay, great, right, it's super simple, but this pushes electrons. You definitely don't have to worry about how or why, you just take my word for it, this pushes electrons, and so when electrons move, just like we said earlier, they have a velocity, whatever, they move, this is current, but it doesn't, that's the word for it, but this makes, right? Electricity. Mm -hmm. So that's the two of the components. Now, 
but okay. Let's just talk through it here. So great. So you got the battery. Oh yeah, this is good. Let's do a little picture too. You you know this by now. There's a positive and a negative. Maybe you didn't even do that. I don't know, but you got to create mm -hmm. a circuit, right? Yes. And so, well, you're gonna attach two ends here. Fine. Guess what? You got a light bulb here. That's not bad. And then, well, guess what? This don't this won't do anything. You have to complete the circuit, which means the positive and negatives are connected, and this light bulb is connected in between these wires. Mm -hmm. And this is not exactly what I mean. You're pretty smart, so I'm sure you can. Hopefully, you can see how this is the same thing that you're doing in lab. It's obviously not the exact same thing, but you got a battery, you got some wires, and you got a light bulb. I assume. Mm -hmm. This thing here creates the voltage. Electrons, here we go. Electrons move through. They're literally moving through the wire. Guess what? There's just a wire, whatever, I don't care. But then it hit, then something interesting happens when the electrons get to the light bulb. Obviously, it happens insanely quick, you know, basically the speed of light, but you don't have to worry about that. And this is the resistance. It hits a resistor. And so this thing here, this filament in there is, is a really strong resistor. And so the Electrons, some of them go through, they have to to complete the circuit, but a lot of them get caught in here because they can't go anymore. Resistance, it creates resistance, it creates inertia. It's fighting to move through it, but it can't. That's why it lights up. And so the electrons are heating up that filament. That's why it gets lit up. Looking at your, we'll definitely say this more, but. If you go to your the, the point of that lab, it looks like on um, activity two is like lit or unlit. Well, if you don't have enough electrons, i.e. if your current's not high enough, it will not be lit. It will be unlit because you don't have basically a high enough current or you don't have the voltage high enough to push the electrons and generate that current. Okay. So well, don't worry, we'll, we'll keep, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it. Um, more detail, of course, but think of the res the battery never or the resistance never changes, right? I mean that light bulb is the same damn light bulb. It doesn't change. What can you do? You can change the current. We're gonna look at maybe you're changing the voltage. What are you changing when you do your lab? Maybe you're changing the light bulb, but but usually you're testing the same light bulb for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing different materials. Okay. I want to finish this basic because this is the this this is the uh, this is the summary of the entire thing that you're learning on this page. A battery provides mm -hmm. electrons. This makes electricity, and we call it current. So maybe write it down just in case, because you got a couple of weeks. He'll probably I, I would be, I would be surprised if he didn't tell you about Ohm's law. This is called current. light bulb is a resistor. Okay, this is good because this is related to your activity too. I'm gonna download it and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so now I'm looking literally at activity two. And just take that test site out. And this is exactly what we have on this page, right? But now mm -hmm. the whole point of your lab is, I'm just gonna draw the same thing. Let's see, you got your battery, right? Wires, positive is usually the little nub there. Um, light bulb.
and then okay that's look it's the same one trust me you know you can see that i think and then then we got whatever this is test site so everything i said still applies it's a little different but oops think about what i'm telling you let's go through it again but now i'm going to talk about this situation a battery provides voltage great that's just a fact battery provides voltage fine what does that voltage do right it pushes the electrons and so i have a voltage yay electrons start moving along the wire they go through this thing the light bulb <clears throat> but now they also go through this material here that's why you have all these different materials and i'll tell you exactly why why you have some of them lit and some are unlit right so it's the same thing we were talking about with this light bulb here. I don't, I don't even care if it's a light bulb. You know, the, the, this is mm -hmm. to show the light bulb is really just a test, right? If you have enough voltage and current to go through. Why? Because remember, we said we have to complete the circuit. Mm -hmm. So the wax paper is unlit. That bulb is unlit because the circuit is incomplete. Why? Because all of the electrons, yeah, they make it through the light bulb, maybe, but it doesn't matter because you have to go back to the, the beginning of the circuit or else the electrons don't flow. If you don't have electrons flowing, you don't have current, you don't have a lit light bulb. And they all get trapped here. They all get trapped in the wax paper, too much inertia. And they get stuck, basically. They're not moving anymore. And so okay. then, then you don't have any electrons over here in this part, basically. Circuit is not complete. Okay. All right, electric electricity. And then, I mean, the key, or I'm sorry, the metal, you know, metal is conductive, or maybe you've heard that, right? Like mm -hmm. electricity easily flows through metal. That's way beyond, yeah. you know, unless you go to, you know, upper division physics or engineering to understand why, just know, just trust us, right? And, so, mm -hmm. but then you would think, you would guess, and I think you've made the right guesses actually, plastic and, okay, yeah, so you get it. And, and that's why, because, you know, the, the, the metal, the paperclip and the key, it depends, makes sense. What if the key's made out of fiberglass? Well, that's not really gonna conduct electricity, but paper and a, a piece of plastic, those are not metallic. That's a good way to think about it, I think for you. Okay. So yeah, you actually, I mean, you predicted everything. And so if you just that you're, you're basically there, just that one extra step of, of what we've been talking about, essentially. Yeah. It's all about whether you can complete the circuit. How do you ask yourself if the circuit is completed? Are the electrons be able to flow all the way through the circuit from the positive end of the battery all the way back to the negative? And of course, through the battery again, right? But. Mm -hmm. That's why when you have wood or whatever that's not metallic, the electrons get stuck in there, basically. And then we'll see how far he goes, I guess, because I don't want to tell you. I've done that too many times before, <laughs> telling you stuff that you don't need. But all right, let's read. Only look at the conclusion. <clears throat> the materials made of metal are the best conductors. Great, and they they might have even lit up a little brighter, maybe because less electrons got stuck. So that means more electrons can go through the light bulb. There are two types of materials, conducting, metallic, great, allows the flow of electricity easily. Insulators, conductors and insulators. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be on there for sure. And I think you got that, right? I mean, conductors, just think of the metal. Insulators are basically everything else. There is a little bit of it there. Metals form ions. Focus more on that. Well, unless you, the ions, you know, did, did you do chemistry yet? I forget. Did yeah, you, I did. You did, okay. So you know what an ion is. Or you, maybe you don't remember. <laughs> kind of, it was over online school, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just an, an atom, it's missing an electron or it has an extra electron. 
So guess okay. what? When an, when an atom's missing an electron, well, guess what? A, an electron can come from wherever the hell it comes from and take the place, right? If you mm -hmm. remember those halogens, fluorine, um, the, the, the things next to the noble gases, they're, they're missing one thing in their valence band. That's obviously getting a little too deep, but they can easily attract, they want electrons, you know? Okay. And if you remember that first column under hydrogen, they want to give it away because everybody wants to be a noble gas, right? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Metals give or take electrons. That's sure. That's what he wants to say. <clears throat> there are four different ways. Okay, I'm looking at number three here. Let me go. Once the bulb is lit, make a sketch of how he did it. Well, that's interesting. Wait. So, what are your first two drawings? Were you, oh, you were trying to, okay, you were trying to put it on the side and see if it still conducted electricity, right? For number three. Yeah, number three. Yeah, talk to me about your drawings. J just like what you were doing, I guess. Okay, so the first one was my prediction and I was right, but um, he said that there were four different ways of um, like making the light bulb light up like four different combinations and I mean they all are all kind of similar but I guess you just like put the light bulb on the positive side and then it lights up and then you put it on the negative side and then you flip to the side and do the same thing so I don't know no yeah yeah and then so maybe if you think about what we've been talking about the reason why they all work is because of what we've been talking about basically mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The circuit is completed no matter what, because the side is metallic, just like that little end nub thing. In mm -hmm. fact, I think the nub is there for, to hold it into the socket. Like it's a mechanical thing. It has nothing to do with electricity, conducting electricity. You know what I mean? Like oh. when you when you put yeah. it in there, I think it helps it. It probably helps it make better contact, right? But as you can see, it doesn't matter. That circuit is completed, whether it's on the positive or the negative, or it's on its side or on the top, perfectly. Because you're right. That's what that's that's what I would have drawn. Number three, the one you drew up there, which is the third drawing under experiment or whatever. That's what I would have drawn because that's just what makes sense, right? But mm -hmm. and hopefully the reasoning is clear because that's pretty important about why all of those work. And yeah, if it's so not, if, you should explain it or think about it yourself. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So as long as it's like a complete circuit, like as long as the wire is connected to the battery and the wire is connected to the light bulb, so as long as it's, yeah. it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, as long as it's touching the metallic part of the light bulb. But I'll tell you right now that if you touch the end of that bulb to mm -hmm. the circuit, the wires, right? you're not going to get anything because it's an insulator. That glass is an insulator and the electrons aren't going to make it to the filament. Oh, okay. So as long as the, um, okay, that makes more sense. The metal part has to be in the circuit, which is kind of weird to say because the light bulb's in the circuit. Well, what if you flip the light bulb upside down? You know, that glass is an insulator, so it's not going to work. Okay. But, but you can think about it as, you know, this, this picture here, I guess helps look my even my wire goes to the side here, which, well, I guess it's touching your battery, but I don't care, you can have a wire that's 50 miles long right now, there's all kinds of issues with that. But the point is the circuits completed as long as your circuits completed you should get something. Okay. Honestly, yeah, and I, you know, you're not saying those words as it looks like. Maybe you're talking about voltage, but current voltage resistance. If you can remember those three things and then how it works, then you're you're like ahead, you're a step ahead of the game. Okay. But definitely spend time to to really make sure you understand what we've been talking about so far, and don't worry about the words yet. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, you said. What is this electricity for? But I can't see the picture. It's cut off. Electricity four and five are like cut off in the pictures you sent. Electricity four and five. In the email. Um, would you like me to take another picture and send them? Yeah, if you want to go over it. I'm I'm just seeing the bulb and the question slash prediction. And I don't know if there's anything below it. For number four. Yeah, number four. Is there anything below the light bulb I need to see? 
Um, it just says the conclusion and the new information. Okay. Um, yeah, let, why don't you send that uh, for four and five, just so I'm using the same words that you're learning. Oh, sorry. Okay. When I downloaded it, it actually is the full page. So never mind. Oh, okay. It wasn't the other, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you got three bulbs. What is the internal conducting path? Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty damn close. And then, yeah, see how that does that, that hopefully that's not too bad for you. Like, like going in and out makes sense. And you seem to have gotten that right. But again, you don't have to go through that little nub. It can go through any part of the metal, which is kind of what your arrows show. But it's literally wherever the filaments go. Right. And yeah. you can see that the, the and so what your those arrows literally represent the path of the electron that are moving, i.e. the current. But it follow it has to follow the path of whatever metal there is. And, and I mean think about the light bulb. That's space in that crown, right? Like it's just air in between the And so you got your crown. So that's the filament and your arrow's fine. That's it. You, you pretty much got the idea, but that just means that, oh, it actually goes, the filament, you can't see it, but it actually goes there, right? Because it has to follow that metal. But what I was saying, like, this is air in here, right? Mm -hmm. that's, why they, that's why there's no arrows there, which is, you know, a little different from what you drew. And just, yeah, I'm pretty sure you got it, but it follows the metal. Why? Because metal is the conductor. Mm -hmm. actually, actually, hair is, it's a material, right? I mean, it's weird, you know, it's a, it's a gas, it's not a solid like a metal, but it is an insulator, technically. Electrons do not flow easily through air. Because mm -hmm. there's not many ions, right? So, internal parts to complete the circuit. There you go. Underline, like, this is... This is definitely much easier, hopefully, than I hope it's much easier than momentum and some of the things we've talked about, but you pretty much got everything. And like, this is underlined star. You don't get yeah. anything unless you do that, right? So I don't like, well, one of the wires is attached to the bottom. Well, there you go. And it tells you exactly that. One is attached to the side. There you go. So, okay. so um, for one of them, so you see for number four, the one, I guess on both of them for the conclusion. So one of them goes like up and then this, and then once it like goes across the filament and then goes down and then it goes like out, why does it go like to the side instead of like directly down? Because it has to follow the filament path. There's no metal there. It's got to follow the path of the path of the metal. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't, Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, and I mean, if you can answer why, then you know you're gonna get full points on the quiz. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but why? Tell me why. The why? I guess I said is true. Why? Why it has to the follow metal. the metal? Oh, okay. Um, Think about what those arrows represent. And then see if you can finish it. Um, so like the inside of a light bulb is metal, which is the conductor. So it is like naturally attracted to it because it will, it will carry the electrons through the light bulb. Easily because it's a conductor. That's the phrase. And so, but why? And then, so can you answer why you asked me initially why the arrows don't go straight down and why? I mean, it's what's the other side of the answer? I guess. Well, I, I'm being a little confusing, but you said they follow the path because it's a conductor, but also they don't go straight down 
they don't not follow the conductor because air is an insulator. And, and, they, and don't they, they don't go straight down because there's no metal there. And, and air, it, it, it can't flow through the air easily. Okay, so, so it follows down. the path of the metal. Okay. What did you say? So it doesn't go straight down because air is like an insulator? Yeah. And, but that, you know, and the metal is a conductor. So it, it wants to go through the conductor way more easily than the insulator. Okay. Right? That makes more sense. Yeah. And I mean, well, as far as you're concerned, the, the, the insulator, no, there's no electricity at all can go through the insulator and will only go through conductors. Okay. All right. Good. Good yeah. question. Oh, and one other thing I thought, I thought you're gonna ask this question, but you didn't, it was, uh, why are there two directions? Sometime. You notice that though, because you have two different, you know, on the left side, it goes up, and on the left side, it goes down on the second one. But the reason for that is because one of them is attached to the negative side of the battery and the other is attached to the positive side. And electrons uh -oh. always flow from the positive to the negative. They flow from the negative to positive, positive to two negative, from positive to the negative. Oh, okay. My teacher didn't really explain that. He just kind of said that it's whatever. He explained it really like in a weird way. He just said that it's like that because um, it just goes to like whatever side it's attracted to and then it can go either way. I don't. I yeah, yeah, because I, yeah, it's, I, it's like, I gotta give, it's hard. It's hard to not be really precise and like say use positive negative charges and talk about it's hard not to talk about this stuff without using words like voltage and current and and being more physics -y about it you know what i mean yeah it, it is tough but hopefully that's clarified and that's a little again you're basically a master if you can remember this stuff that we're talking about here right <laughs> all right i'm looking at five now and then we can definitely look at them the wording and the phrases on the pre-activity because I imagine some of that stuff will be on there. Place an L next to each bulb in the O oh, if it will be lit. Okay, and these are correct. Let me see this. Why, why wouldn't these be lit? Okay, the first one makes sense. And you actually did that. You did the arrow coming from the positive terminal, or maybe he told you to do that, but that's exactly what I was saying. Electron flows, which is represented by the arrow. So the electrons move from the positive to the negative. So that means they come out of the positive terminal just like your arrow denotes there. Okay. Okay. And those two are unlit, you're saying? Oh, okay. Okay, sense, I guess. I think, I feel like that one on, on the second diagram, the one that's looking like that, there's three of them, right? One is this, mm -hmm. the thing initially goes into that battery first. So that one's, I guess, lit. But you see how this one isn't connected to anything? Yeah. And then, and then the air, the circuit goes over here, battery, whatever, the battery's connected right there like that. Mm -hmm. This one's out of the circuit basically. So that one's definitely unlit because because there's nothing, it's going in, nothing's coming out though. The circuit is not complete for that bulb. Okay. And it's the same for the, um, the not the middle one, but the one on the left, right? So, I mean, if, if we, I'm gonna go back to number four here and it says, inside a light bulb, one of the wires is attached to the bottom of the bulb base and the other is attached to the side. So it looks like the one coming in, right, is coming into the side 
and this one coming out is coming out of the side too so because it's a light bulb and he because only because the point i'm trying to say is only because if you have a light bulb you have to go one out of the side and one out of the bottom apparently okay because of the way it's made and, and yeah so that is no good see that even though they're both touching the metal I, apparently the filament wire doesn't do that so it has to be the bottom that's pretty specific though i wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about that but hopefully that's clear also yeah okay and then the bottom one it's like a sh it's a short circuit but if you look there he's calling it a dead end so i, I mean we've talked about this a bit it sounds like i understand just follow that not only the wire, you got that part, that's easy, but then follow the filament. And, and if the filament, right? Mm -hmm. And see actually what I'm talking about there on the third one there, one is coming into the side. It's this guy here, he's, he's like that. And one of the, 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 the things coming in the side and then the wire is very clearly coming out of the bottom here where they meet, right? Mm -hmm. So that's cool. And I guess that's why that one is, lit this one's lit these are terrible bulbs Unlit. if this is a regular quiz though i wouldn't i mean i wouldn't worry too much about the why i mean you're, the, the the moral of the story is follow the wires and the filaments and remember that one comes out of the side and one goes out the bottom or, or vice versa i guess good enough so one comes out yeah the, the important part here is, is new information on number four where he says inside a light bulb great one of the wires is attached to the bottom and the other is attached to the side okay so if we go back to the very beginning, when I started this thing, I even drew it because I was just trying to convey, look, there's a battery that has voltage and then the wires go through, but look, they're both in the side. And technically that wouldn't work based on your lab because of the wires, they have to be connected. Mm -hmm. Is that okay. good? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. The point is that the, the arrows, the electrons flow through the metal. So wherever that metal is, and yeah. It just happens to be in the bottom inside for your particular light bulbs, but I don't care. You know, it could be a different light bulb and it could be both on both sides. And hopefully that's clear and not confusing. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so that one's there. I think that was it actually. I mean, for those. Yeah, this one. Okay, there's another page. Oh, more stuff. Unless that's just the bottom of part five. Great, but let's spend some time. So again, volts are what injure. I'm surprised he didn't give you the answer there, but that's false because it's the current or the flow of electrons, right? But if you go back to your equation, V equals IR. I mean, if you have a higher current, you have a higher voltage. So just remember that the, I, I, I think this is like this is pro and more than you need, but the battery gives the voltage and guess what the voltage pushes the electrons, which creates those arrows that you draw We call it current. And so that's kind of it's a little too much, but number two here is similar electric charges. Oh, okay, I was gonna say that's not true. <laughs> I was thinking they were all true, but no, it's opposites attract right you know that phrase. Mm -hmm. And so, but there's only, it's, it's, it's actually pretty simple. There's only two types of charges, positive and negative. So if they are opposite, so that kind of also, this might be a little too much, but we were saying that the electrons go out of the positive end of the battery from positive to negative. Why? Because opposite part, opposites um, attract. Positive and negative like to go together. I didn't explain that very well, because then you would think, well, why, why would the electrons move towards the positive? Um, yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that, but um, 
the false is true. And I th that, that one's pretty easy. The little shocks you. Oh, I was like, little shocks you. What? What's the little? All right. The little shocks you sometimes receive when grabbing the doorknob. Small lightning bolt. Yeah, static electricity. Electricity that's built up and then it, it it's discharged, right? It's extra electrons. That's what static electricity is. And they flow to your body. And that's what lightning is too, right? Electrons literally flowing to the ground. But we're talking about I don't know, unfathomably an unfathomably large amount of electrons for, for a lightning bolt, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Number four, yes. Look up the guy who got struck by like seven times. Like I've never been struck. I assume you've never been struck. Like that's crazy to get no. struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah. Guy, I got struck seven times. No joke. It's it's real time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, anyways, it can do it twice. I don't think you need to know why. Batteries give off or emit electricity. That's pretty good. See, it's weird. Like, why wouldn't he tell you about current, but he's telling you about the chemical reaction in a battery, you know? <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, he's, this is, that's a weird one, but I mean, technically, yes. Within a battery, like when a battery is connected to a circuit, that's what creates electricity. But a battery by itself, not created, not connected to a circuit. And, and how it, remember I was saying, you, I don't even know if I should. Electric, electricity is created by the voltage difference because current uh, electrons are moving. But initially, how do you get those electrons to move out of the positive end in the first place? Well, there's a little little goblins and little chemical factory and goblins throwing acid into something. I forget how it works, but it is a chemical reaction like mm -hmm. between metals, ions giving off, shooting electrons basically out through the battery. I don't even know why I'm spending time talking on this. It's kind of cool, but like, it's not really useful to you, but mm -hmm. <laughs> batteries die when they run out of electricity. Well, I think they die. I don't know. It's related to number five, actually, because they're not really, they don't really run out of electricity, but the chemical reaction is what runs out, right? Mm -hmm. so. Okay, people have been injured. This guy's so weird. Have been injured or killed in fires and or explosions. Do they there? Yes. Have you heard about that? Wait, no, what? He said no. False. <laughs> I've heard of that. Oh. I thought static electricity. Oh, well, killed, oh, wait, I guess. I don't know. I think number seven is true, but because uh, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's one of those myth buster things because I, I, I didn't. I didn't research it, but like, it seems reasonable that like, oh no, I'm thinking of number seven though. Haven't you heard of that? Like people, you don't have your cell phone out while you're filling up your gas tank. Cause the, yeah, I, forget I don't know. It seems like it, it could be true. And when I was taking this, I debated for a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, honestly, of comparing two things. Like you're, have you heard you're supposed to touch metal before you like get out of your car? No, I haven't heard that. Really? So it's actually related to number three, the, the little shocks you get. So like, you know, rub a balloon or, or roll around on the carpet, right? And you get, mm -hmm. you gather electrons and you gather static electricity. But the same thing happens when you like rub your seat with your pants or your, or your back, you know, and you create static electricity. And if you don't discharge that, I've, I was thinking about that because if there are like fumes from the gas, right? Yeah. And it can, I've heard, I, I think it can ignite because of the static electricity if you don't discharge or whatever but i mean you've never done it and you've never heard it and so like it's an incredibly rare event right but yeah uh, so are the cell phones right because sometimes i do that and i'm like hmm, i don't think i'm supposed to do this i heard about that <laughs> but nothing happens yeah. you know so yeah I don't know. oh that's oh number eight is exactly what i was talking about right mm -hmm. simply due to getting in and out of their vehicle static electricity Make sense? I know I kind of talked fast there, but. I mean, kind of, I've never heard of that. Yeah, happen. yeah. <laughs> right, so it's so incredibly rare. Like it's probably never happened. You know, you could take a hundred people and it might not happen to them ever in their entire lives, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess, I don't know, it does make sense. Like I said, 
roll around on the carpet, and then touch a doorknob. And you'll, you might get a little shock. Yeah. Because you gathered electrons. You literally stole electrons from the carpet. And when you get out of your car, it's the same damn thing. You, you, you're literally stealing electrons from your chair. It's kind of a funny sentence, but like it's true. And then they're on, they're, you have excess electrons on your clothes and your body. And then yeah, they can ignite the gas fumes. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, don't worry about it, you know? <laughs> Okay. Anyway, sitting in a vehicle during your lifetime, I just want to say, so, yes, that's an awesome physics problem, actually. Metal cage is a good conductor, but it it's the cage. Think about the, think about being in a cage. I know the car is not different, but you're enclosed in a, in a metal cage, basically, and the, mm-hmm. and the electricity can only throw, flow through the metal. Okay. So it's, it's not going to touch you. It's not going to get to you because of the insulator, the insulation between you, which is the air. Electrons can't flow, just like the, the way the light bulb works. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 10 and 9 are kind of the same, I guess. Oh, okay. All right, uh, it's only a light switch you don't want if you accidentally swap the location. Right, it'll just be backwards, right? But it'll still flow and it should still work. If you yeah. some both switches. And then number 12, they're not completing the circuit. That's why nothing happens. Oh, for the, for the you bird? Have, you have to complete the circuit. Oh, okay. To travel through the wire because the bird's body. Okay, that one seems reasonable too. Go with that one, but... I've heard that you, they need to stand on two. Why? Because they have to complete the circuit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're saying, what is he saying? The presence and continuous travel because the bird's body is not a good conductor of electricity. And yeah, okay. I'm sure. But it's good to keep in mind because that really is the whole, If you, like I said, if you only get one thing out of this, it's, you have to complete a circuit to get electricity. Okay. <clears throat> plug offers ground fault protection for safety yeah so if you have too many electrons i.e too much current well you're going to blow up this thing and so that's why those tests are there because if it te- if it reads feels whatever it's a machine but if it reads too much current well i better switch this thing off or i'm going to kill everybody so that's like a safety measure okay and that is it all right so yeah i think i mean you, you, you're probably confident right and yeah it makes a lot more sense now good good yeah because and this is like way easier than a lot of stuff we've done too so be confident yeah, tomorrow too. you know okay all right cool good luck okay thank you so much of course bye